Hi, I'm Jason Daunter. Tonight, join me in the Projects with Jason team as we celebrate the talented students from Fullerton Union High School in Fullerton, California. Also, from Broadway's The Play That Goes Wrong and Jersey Boys, Quinn Van Antwerp. This is Virtual Cabaret. Hey everybody, it's Jason. Welcome to Virtual Cabaret. We are here week three. We are going strong. We are so excited to be back. I can't even begin to tell you guys, I look so forward to these. Uh, we are so excited to be giving you another great show. We got Fullerton Union High School. The rehearsal today was unbelievable. And the catalog they're giving you tonight, we're giving you some musical theater history. Songs that I was like, this is crazy. And I was told like the kids picked it. So it wasn't even like, you know, uh, the teacher telling them that you've got to sing this. So they were really challenging themselves. If you're just joining us for the first time at Virtual Cabaret, we are here to celebrate high school theater across the country who have been silenced by not being in schools and their musicals and plays being shut down. So we're giving them a virtual resource to come and sing their songs for all of you. And they are collaborating with working professionals from all over the nation, all the way from Oregon to New York and all in between to back home here in Southern California where the home studios are. Uh, to get together and make these uh, shows happen. We've all been learning how to do new things and new technology and making it work and trying to make each show work, W-E-R-K, hashtag work, uh, making it work each week uh, for a new show to all of you. And we're so thankful that you've been uh, coming along for the ride with us. So tonight, Fullerton Union uh, is with us in the house. We're very excited, but how's everybody doing? I hope you're hanging in there. Uh, we are, we're doing this. We're doing this. It's getting long. It's been about 30 days for some of us. Right, so we're going through it and we're having a good time and we're tapping into uh, laughs and jokes and community and songs and musical theater, which I'm always about, right? So let's get right to it. I wanna introduce you all to the theater director from Fullerton Union High School, uh, Mickle, Mr. M Mickle? Mr. Michael Despars. Where's Michael Despars? There he is. Can you get that? Look at that. We have a one. I have a studio audience. Much like Kathy Lee and Hoda, I demanded we had people social distance all over here on the street. So, Absolutely. how are you? I'm fantastic. I'm so excited about this opportunity, especially for my students and uh, some recognition of our incredible program. So thank you so much for having us. Speaking of your program, tell us, tell everybody about your program, uh, about the size, all those kind of things, where you're located in California. Give us all a little bit of info about the school. Sure. So uh, we're a comprehensive high school that's located about 15 uh, minutes or so north of the Magic Kingdom, Disneyland. Uh, so we're right in the thick of it. Uh, I run a theater program with classes that have about 160 to 180 students. Um, but when we start doing shows, those are open to our entire campus and we could have 250 people involved by the end of the school year. Um, so we really, we work well with all the other programs on our campus. If you're a choral music student, you're a part of our program. If you're a dancer, you're a part of our program. We, we like to just make sure that we welcome everybody and um, that, we provide students with a professional opportunity. Uh, one of the things we really like to say is that we don't just produce a high school play, we produce a professional production with high school students. Work, I, I think that's so important. And I'm sure that uh, process, I've been talking a lot about process and products, right? That you can actually do both. The product can actually come yeah. out of a really wonderful process. Absolutely. And I think along with that, that quantity doesn't always mean quality. And sometimes you have to, uh, you have to do less to actually do more. And then we are really proud that that's, uh, that's something that we focus on. Yeah, tell us some of the shows that have been in your repertoire through the years. Sure, um, we just got done doing a, a play uh, called The Girl in the White Pinafore, which was written by Jiggs Burgess out in Texas. It's a wonderful play. I recommend anybody who's doing high school theater take a look at that. Um, and last year we did Cabaret. We've done Sweeney Todd in the past because we have this amazing Wurlitzer organ in our uh, big auditorium. Oh, wow. um, and we just, uh, while we didn't get the opportunity to open Matilda, um, we actually were uh, closed the night before we opened. Um, so that is where That's we were. Because okay. we, we, we have a special treat for everybody at the end of the show. And so I was wondering how far along in the process you were because that looked pretty finished to me. So yeah, literally, the final breath and... 
yeah, it was it was pretty tough. Um, but listen, I have resilient kids. I have, you know, I had a regret. And my regret is that we closed this during tech week, right? So the students only received criticism from their wow. directorial team. They never got to the point where they got all of the praise that comes with a performance. Um, so that is my only regret. And I'm gonna work on that for the next show and make sure that that, that praise comes in with that criticism at all times. Um, but uh, I will say that the last dress rehearsal that I saw, which was Wednesday night, mm -hmm. um, it was like I watched the show for the first time. It was the most incredible performance. And if that's where that lives in the artistic atmosphere, I think we achieved all of our objectives. The students yeah. had an incredible opportunity. They got to run it. I was able to see it in a, in a very spectacular way. And so I'm very pleased. I, I hope we get an opportunity to, to put it back on the stage. Yeah. Um, but if not, that's, that's the memory that I'm leaving with, especially with these senior students. I love it. And also like, as you, we've seen, we've seen in rehearsals and everything that everybody, we're just all a bundle of emotions because it's so great to try and connect. And we're, try, we're such a art form that connects, right? Yeah. What would you say to not just your students, but all the students and teachers out there tonight that are watching, uh, just what's that? I'm going to put you totally on the spot. And like, what's the, what's the one sentence, two sentence that you'll give them this week where we are in this process? Um, you know, artists are resilient. We went through the plague. <laughs> we went through, uh, the flu of 1918, and now we're here. And the most important thing to remember is that when everyone had to stay in their homes, everyone turned on the TV, everyone watched the National Theater Live, everyone turned to the entertainment industry. So that industry is always going to be there. And I just want to encourage students who are interested in the arts to be resilient and to hang in there. And let's find a way to begin using the arts and our craft through digital means. I mean, this platform is fantastic and we're we're going to we're going to find the next horizon and we are still going to be here creating and being incredible resilient artists. So you got that right. Thank you. As I say each week, thank you for giving me the keys to your car. Hey. Uh, we're in Fullerton Union High School with no bumps, dents, or any of that tonight. Uh, we're going to throw out the musical theater facts at everybody tonight, too, because I'm I'm going to just do it. We're going to do a little musical work. theater. Michael Despar's work. Exactly. We're going to add the staff to work. Michael Despar's, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, so let's do a check-in with our special guest tonight because we got a boy. We got a cute boy. And I'm very excited. I like the, the belting girls, but we got a boy. We're Where's Quinn? Quinn, come talk to me. Oh, look at him. Just, yes, just applauding for himself. It's some sort of like, are you like in a chateau somewhere? You yes, I'm, I'm stuck in the 1870s here. <laughs> this is the west wing of the house. Is this the set of the play that goes wrong? Is that what no. you're it's something I've always wanted to try. And when we got into quarantine, I was like, well, I'm not going to shave it. And here we go. And it's it's really, a, um, I'm sure there's a lot of students out there that are growing better mustaches than I am. But um, you know, we're all trying new things in this in this unprecedented time. Look, we in war times. We all just try <laughs> to day. I don't know what day it is anymore. I woke up oh. to go to work today. It was literally like, please let me go do like a 16-hour shift. I think this um, is day 29 for us. So. Yeah, yeah, it's getting there. Um, we're thrilled to have you here tonight. We're gonna have you sing a couple of songs. So I to OC to the yeah. OC. And you got um, you got to get a chance to see a little bit of rehearsal today. What did you think? There, the people are in for a treat, right? With these high school kids, um, it's amazing. And if we were half as prepared when we were this age as these kids are now, I feel like our careers would be even better than they are. So I, I'm just so impressed. I'm so impressed. I'm so um, uh, proud that I, I went to school out in the OC. So it's nice yeah. to see some uh, some hometown kids. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna talk Thank about you know, hometown boy. Yeah, we'll check back in with you in a little bit. All right. See you soon. Adorable. I'm gonna be this way the whole show, everybody. Adorable. Uh, so our first performer. Let's get to it. Vincent, come talk to me. There he is. Hi, Hi Vincent. How are you? Good. The studio Good. audience is very happy with you, Vincent. Look at that. I know. Just to, don't let it go to your head. Stay in the moment, right? Yeah. Uh, how's it going? You're a junior. How's the yeah. online learning? It's good. It's going. It's good. I get to like work on my own schedule, but you know, All I right miss there. my. Parents, but that. Yeah. What good. were you? You were in Matilda, right? You were going to be in Matilda. Yes. Who were you playing? I was Mr. Wormwood. I played her dad. So, okay. yeah. And with this, how many have you been in the theater program since your freshman year? Yes. Great. Yeah. And what are you singing for us tonight? 
I'm singing What Do I Need With Love from Thoroughly Modern Millie. I love it. It started as a movie starring Dame Julie Andrews. We're still trying to book her. If she'd call our people back, we keep trying to get to her. We want you, Dame Andrews. We'll do whatever you want. Uh, but Millie, and I'm assuming you know, you're Jimmy. Uh, we yeah. want to tell everybody like the whole story about Jimmy because we don't want to spoiler alert. You know, there's a big surprise or whatever. Yeah. And as you and I were talking, it's actually kind of funny because I want to give a shout out to 2005, the national tour okay. cast. If you all are out there of Millie 15 years ago, we were touring that thing across the country, if you can believe it. So we are thrilled. Uh, Janine Sasori, Dick Scanlon are going to be honored to hear you sing this tonight. So give us a little What Do I Need With Love? This is Vincent, everybody. Two. Oh, the places I would like to show you, although I hardly know you, I've a funny feeling we'd make a perfect pair. Famous sights I want to see you seeing, the nights of you and me, me, you, we. Wait a minute, just a minute. No, no, no. No, I'm a Joe with just one name. Every night to date a different day. Call them each by the same pet name. Hey, maybe in a row I've had my ducks. Give loads of gals, give me loads of yucks. Leave the coup until the other clocks. I don't need a maybe. Got it good. What do I need with love? Always practice what I preach. Keep temptation out of easy reach. Stick to dolls who watch the hand of bleach. Happy, come and go the way I choose. Never gonna sing with tied down blues. Other guys would kill to fill my shoes. Wing clipped, looks happy, got it good. What do I need with love? Oh, that was a near miss. Talk about a close shave. Flirted with disaster. There must be someone up there watching over me. Talk about a fourth leaf over me. Peter Rabbit missing a footsie. Means I roll without a tootsie. Got it good. What do I need with love? I got it good. What do I need with love? Skip the vows and all that rot. Tell the minister that I do not write and breathe. He's a bird and bees. He's a free and easy. He's a I got without her. Although I heartily know. The, right to the water. You can't wait 30 water. minutes. Okay. Okay. The vote tape. Protect the gift. Protect the gift. Uh, look, so I've got time to see you do a show next year because you're a junior and I will be there. So if Matilda doesn't awesome. come back, we'll see you in whatever you're in next year. And thanks for being on the show tonight. We appreciate awesome. it. Who was your crew tonight? Did you have a crew at home? I, my parents, they helped me earlier with all the lighting and making sure the music was good. And they're now That's outside the bedroom door, right? They're, they're, watching, they're, they're watching out there. Thank yeah. you <laughs> for us. Thank you, Vincent. Good job. <laughs> Uh, yeah, to all the crews out there, the brothers and sisters, the parents, the dogs, the animals, there actually is, I won't tell you what number, but there's a cat that likes to make an appearance during one of the songs tonight. Uh, so just, you know, watch for that. <laughs> if the cat makes an appearance in the show. Uh, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Who do we got next? We got Brittany. Brittany Hi. Brittany. Hi, Brittany. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, you're another one who I can see do a show next year because you got another year. Yes, I do. Uh, when did you first start performing? When did the theater I, by you? I started performing when I was in middle school, but I started out with like television when I was seven years old. So I've been doing like acting and singing throughout my whole entire life. But I started theater my sixth grade in sixth grade in middle school. <laughs> you, you don't have to tell me in front of it. You had a residual check? You don't show that has like residuals? What would we know you from? Were you like on a TV show that's bringing in some money? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, then we're going to talk. We're going to talk after the show. We're going to be right back, everybody. Brittany and I are going to talk about her career. <laughs> I bring that up in rehearsal next time. We talk about those things. Uh, I loved when I, before I even met you, I saw that you were doing Band Geeks. Which yeah. I actually saw. I mean, it was one of those, you know, it's a short-lived, uh, off-Broadway, uh, really great production. What? How did you find the show? Um, I just, um, I found this song on YouTube, and I looked it up. I read it. I was like, I've never actually seen it. I wish I could see it, but I love this song. I love the music, and I just like the show, like how it's written, what it's about. It's just a very fun, awkward show. It's it's yeah. really. Yeah, I love it. Like they're misfits, and like I always say, like it's it's not a rip against us, but it's like we're all the box of misfit toys. Yeah, you know, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. It's like we're all just looking for a, a community to be a part of, and yeah. that's sort of what it is. Like, who is your go-to uh, Broadway star? If you could talk to one Broadway star tonight and look right at that camera and tell him who is it, tell him. It would be Alex Brightman. I love Alex Brightman from Beetlejuice. Why? Really? I love that man. Yes, I saw him on Broadway um, last summer. And I, he, his performance just, it inspired me. I, I think he's an amazing actor. Oh, that wow. is amazing. Um, we did Wicked together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, yeah, you should also said that in rehearsal earlier. They got their closing notice this week. So I've been thinking about him a lot because they're yeah. not gonna, Beetlejuice isn't gonna come back. And oh, like, he redefined himself from School yeah. of Rock and some yeah. great performances. But we're about to see a great performance from you. So why don't you sing to us from Band Geeks? Okay, I will. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, give it up. There it goes again. The moment's gone, and I'm too lame to speak. Another wasted opportunity. Always waiting for something to happen. But nothing's gonna happen. Not for me. <laughs> buddy. I'm always buddy. I'm a girl for your information, forever in this situation, waiting and hoping he'll notice how I'm feeling. But every time I get him near, I fade away, I disappear. That's me, never getting heard. He just smiles and walks away, like I never said a word. Oh, can anybody hear me? Am I just blowing air while the whole world marches past? And so I'll blow and blow, though I know it gets me nowhere. I just get lost, lost in the grass. Flits don't sparkle, I like the tons. There's no visual attraction, no stimulus reaction. Pretty music. So the pretty that I got, I'm special in a quiet way. At least that's what my parents say. Whatever, they were never in the band, and their hair is turning gray. No, they don't understand. Oh, can anybody hear me? I just know, I know, I can sparkle on the grass, but my melody can never be heard clearly. I just get lost, lost. Lost in the brass, I get so lost, lost in the brass. Listen, I'm not background noise. Listen, I make music. See me, I'm not one of the boys. I shine, I shine, I shine on my own. I don't wear makeup, I don't stick my hair up with some awesome tastic pink bread. No, I'll never be a majorette. I'm plain, I'm basic, and I sweat when I get nervous. Oh, I suck at popularity. People just don't notice me, but someday high school's got to end, and I'll finally find a place where this woodwind doesn't land. Oh, there's a whole world to be pursuing. If I could just get out and leave this all here in the past. Yeah, they'll remember me thinking, God, how she doing? And I'll be long gone. Oh, I'll be solo avocado, cut in loud and clear, right through the tube of blast. Soaring high above that clumsy base vibrato, I won't be lost, lost, lost.
lost in the brass. And suddenly they'll see there's so much more to me. At last I won't be lost. Lost in the brass. Lost in the brass. Thank you. Oh, there it is. Hello, Broadway calling. <laughs> As we've learned, I love a belt. I love a nice straight tone into a last four count, you know, vibrato. So that was amazing. You, I can't wait to see you on stage. I can't actually wait to meet all of you guys in real life when we're finally able to open the doors and come out of our houses again and we can all get together and actually sing a song. Um, I did reach out to your, your Broadway person. We'll see if we hear back from him. But I did tell him that he was an inspiration to you and I know that'll probably mean something to him. I literally did just text him. So just to say that because that's what we all need sometimes to know that there's somebody out there that cares about us and thinks our performances and what we do by putting costumes and standing in the dark backstage yeah. matters. So you matter, he matters, and you were great. Thanks for being on the show tonight. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Wonderful. So when I saw this next uh, number on the list, I was like, this has, I literally was like, this has to be dust bars, like telling this kid he needs to do this, right? Because like, you just don't see like the apple tree on many, many lists. I mean, it's a Bach and Harnick. I mean, Fiddler on the Roof, she loves me. They were legends, right? Uh, but we're going to hear from the apple tree. So let's talk to the gentleman who's going to sing it. Cooper, come talk to me. Howdy. Hi, Cooper. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Cooper, yes. Uh, Cooper, I told you I was going to find out some info about this show, and we were going to chit chat about it. So what I found out, I, one of the things I just found out, which I'm kind of shocked about, is uh, 1966 at the Schubert Theater. And what's crazy about that is the Schubert Theater is where, when it goes back to Kill a Mockingbird, is running, where it was just my home for two years. So I just literally saw that before we went live, and I was like, "Oh, the Schubert Theater!" But this was really interesting. I want to get it right. Uh, Mike Nichols who's no longer with us, the famous director who brought us some of the greatest films and some great stage shows. He originally wanted to cast Dustin Hoffman in this musical, but Dustin Hoffman couldn't sing and the vocal requirements wouldn't do it. So Alan Alda went on to do it. However, Mr. Nichols and Mr. Hoffman collaborated a couple of years later on The Graduate, which is a crazy kind of, you know, uh, weird, just, I love these kind of stories about who was supposed to do it, who didn't do it. Well, how did you find this song and this show? Um, so I was working with my acting coach last summer and we were, we were talking and we were trying to find pieces and we, he gave me like this giant list and I was re listening to all of them and I found the, I found the apple tree and I, I instantly fell in love. I loved it. Well, and I've seen you in rehearsal. You really, you really take us on a fun journey. So give us a little forbidden fruit from the apple tree. Ladies and gentlemen, Cooper. Rosy apples they call forbidden fruit. What I'm about to say is confidential, so promise you'll be mute. Because if every creature in the garden knows, they'll come round like hungry buffaloes. And in no time, there'll be none of those precious apples left for you and me. Now in the average apple, you're accustomed to skin seeds, flesh, and core. But you will find that these are special apples that give you something more. Why every seed contains some information you need to speed your education. The seeds indeed of all creation are here. Why be foolish, my dear? Come with me to that tree. Now we eat a bridge at the luscious bite of this not forbidden fruit. You'll see your mind expand and your perceptions grow more and more acute. You can teach him plumbing and philosophy, new techniques for glazing pottery, woodcraft, first aid, home economy, madam, madam will be overjoyed when he becomes aware of your attainments. He'll be with loving pride. He'll say, oh, Eve, you're indispensable. 
please don't leave my side with your nifty newfound education he'll relish every conversation why you'll be adam's inspiration this way just an apple a day wait and see come with me to that tree now It took them a second because they were scared of you. They were like, what just happened there? They were they were really in the moment. Uh, what What is your like dream role? What role do you want to play? If I was here to offer you like whatever role you could play, what role do you want to play? Um, either Sweeney Todd or Elder Price. I can see either of those in your future. Your Sweeney Todd would be off the chart. I could already tell. Where are you planning to go to school? College. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm definitely looking at uh, my top choice right now is Roosevelt University for their BFA acting program. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Hang in there. I know you're a senior and this has got to be a really weird time yeah. uh, doing all that. We're, we're planning a virtual commencement. We don't know what that means, but we're going to have a virtual commencement at some point. So stay tuned for whatever that is. All right. <laughs> Thanks for giving us a really classic uh, musical theater song that a lot of people probably didn't know and you educated the kids tonight. So work. Cooper, everybody. Cooper. <laughs> We're starting a new segment tonight called Jason Talks to Broadway Stars He's Had Crushes On Forever. But he told them before they came on the show, so it's not a surprise. Quinn, come back. Here Quinn, I am. Everybody, just so we <laughs> so let's start off right off the bat that Quinn is straight. So when they're unachievable, that's what I enjoy. So hi, Quinn. Hi, Thanks for agreeing to do this. Um, so you are from out here. You're from out in California. I'm from above San Francisco, and I went to college at UC Irvine, just up the road from Fullerton, down the road. Down the road. You're asking the wrong person. Uh, I uh, yeah, great I'm the guy. On the East Coast at the moment, but but yeah, it's, I, I'm new here. I'm only like what eight weeks, I guess. And when I announced I was coming out here, I posted the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh wow! There yeah, that, that had a lot of people confused. <laughs> uh, you were you were from a small town though, right? I'm from a very small town um, with a very big art scene. Um, I was actually born on like a little quote unquote hippie commune up there, mm -hmm. like no electricity. So like small, small. Ooh, wow, but yeah. a big performing arts family, yeah? Yeah, uh, my mom runs a dance school. My aunt is a, like a folk singer. My other aunt was a, um, a um, artistic director for a long time. We have a lot of actors, dancers, and uh, singers in the family. Brothers and sisters that are in the business too? Uh, my sister is a, a professional dancer. My brother is is an accountant. So at least we have one with like a oh, real yeah. stable and not a bad one. They can tell you what to do with the money that you know you yeah. see or you don't see, right? Yeah. Uh, where'd you go to college? At uh, UC Irvine. Oh, you said that. Yeah. And theaters. What was your favorite role to play uh, in educational theater, either high school or college? Um, you know, in college, I got to do something that I, I never thought I would be good at, which I think is such a wonderful experience when you're young. As I got to play Officer Lockstock in You're in Town. And I think I was like, you know, I was like 20 years old. And I think that's like my favorite because it was something that I, not that necessarily I would never play, but something that I didn't think of myself as that really mm -hmm. had to stretch my idea of who I could be on stage for the first yeah. time. You know? I think that's what I... I love so much about educational theater to begin with is a lot of times that you want the audience there, but it's like, I keep talking about process product, but it's, you can right. take those college, you could do those weird concepts and not have to worry about whereas commercial theater. It's like, once you start seeing open seats, it's like, how much longer do we have? Right. You know, and you sort of know it's a matter of time before that closing notice is going to go up and you, you get to that day sometimes. And it's like the grass isn't always greener. There are certain, you know, you hear a lot of complaining going on in Broadway houses. And it's like, you're supposed to be living out your dream. Right. You know? Right. I, I do hope that on the other side of this, people are much more appreciative of the opportunities we're given uh, in this business. How did your, how did your uh, first Broadway gig go down? What was the audition process like? And what was the phone call like? Um, I, when I first moved to New York city, I moved to New York city when I was 21 and I kept going in and in over and over again for Phantom of the Opera. And I was going in for Raul and Phantom of the Opera. And I kept being like told that I was too young or, um, you know, not just not right. And with the casting director, it was like, just like, wear the oldest looking suit you can and don't shave and all these things. And finally they said, it's not happening, but we, we, we do want to bring you in for Jersey boys. And after 13 auditions for Jersey boys, <laughs> I finally booked the Toronto company of Jersey boys. 
And from there I went to the tour and then I went to Broadway. So um, I was with Jersey Boys for eight years all over North Whoa, America. Oh, I didn't do that math. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and how, before I have you sing from Jersey Boys, uh, how, how was it running in a show that long? Always in the same role or did you change? Were you always, always in the same role? Um, I did almost 3,000 performances as Bob Gaudio. And uh, I think that's the record. I, I'm not, I think so. It is tonight. Uh, but you know, it's amazing to, to do a show like that because in the show, you get to play a real person for 25 years of their life. And so mm -hmm. playing them, you know, as a 22 year old is very different than playing them as a almost 30 year old. Yeah. So I, I feel like I grew up with Bob, like Bob really mentored me yeah. through my life. It's, I got the, I got the pleasure to do it at uh, the St. Louis Muni. Oh yeah. Some of the boys that I think, you know, I'm sure yeah. Yeah. Of them were, uh, three of them were all from different Arkin, communities. Arkin, it's, it's, uh, yeah, he was great. And people love it. It's such a it's such a show that just people just you know go to and they love. So will you sing a little something from Jersey Boys for us? Absolutely, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Quinn Van Antwerp. I cried for you. Now cry for me. No, no, I don't love you anymore. Cry for me. Well, you had your fun with someone new. Girl, now you wanted me to take you back. We're all through Cause now I'm leaving No, no, I make believing You made a fool of me So now I'm leaving you Well, I Much more than you will ever know But you just cheated and you lied Go on and cry for me Well, you knew it from the start Someday you'd break my heart Now we're all through So cry Cry for me. Just wait, cried for you. Won't you cry for me, baby? Just wait, cried for you. Go on and cry. Cry for me. No, that is, no. Mm. Go on and sang. Sang and work. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, take that bow. I just, yes, Quinn. Oh, Quinn. <laughs> um, I'm, when, we, when we break tonight, we'll talk. I want you to record like the soundtrack for bedtime for me so I can just have you sing me to sleep every night. But I also love musical theater because I would not go into a big belt song like that if I was crying over someone. I'd burn their house down. But, you I know. know. It doesn't make any sense. Whatsoever. It only happens. That's the beauty of a jukebox musical. You can really make anything work, though, you know? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? It's like, oh, that, there's a moment, Mama Mia, I won't say which one, but I was like, I should have seen that one coming. You know, right. you walk right into that song. Yeah. Will you stick around and come back and do another one? Please. Excellent. We'll see you at the end of the show. Quinn, everybody, thank you. Adorable. Yas, Quinn. Make sure you follow that Instagram. It's just fun to say, too, right? Sydney, come talk to me. Hi. There she is. Hi, senior. Who were you? Oh. <laughs> they went, but they read, read the guest and say, there it is. There they are. Um, who were you supposed to be in Matilda? Yes. Oh, yes. I was supposed to be Miss Wormwood. There we go. 
Okay, so you're you're you saw your other half earlier in the show, and now because yeah. yes, perfect. Excellent. Um, was it a? Uh, I should have asked this earlier, but was it a high school student playing Matilda? Or did you actually have a an elementary child or? It was a high school student. We had a sophomore and a freshman. Oh wow, they were going to share the role in alternate. How many performances do you guys do at your school? Um, we Maybe were going to run. We had six. Sorry. Six. Okay, sorry, we were both stuck. The internet is six. You're going to do six shows over one week, or is it like two weekends? Two weekends. Two weekends. Okay. And what are you singing tonight? I will be singing uh, I'm Breaking Down from Falsettos or In Trousers. Yes, we get the great debate is on, right? That William Finn wrote this, we think originally for In Trousers, and then it was, you know, adapted through the years and then went to uh, uh, Falsettos, obviously, when those shows got combined. And were you familiar with this show? How did you find out about the Falsettos and William Finn catalog? So I first found out um, about this song before I found out about the show through my mom who found it for me for an audition for a community theater version or yes, a community theater production of, um, oh my gosh, Once Upon a Mattress. There we go. I love that show. We can't even get on that tangent. I love that show. Bonnie Milligan should be Winifred. There needs to be a revival of it. I'm putting it out there, but yes, keep going. Um, so then from there, you know, I found the song and then I kind of lost it for a little while. And then, you know, when they started recording falsettos again and the revival came out, of course, I listened to it like the musical theater nerd that I am. And I absolutely fell in love with all of it. I've seen the show like three times, I think. <laughs> it's Yeah. Did you see it in New York with Stephanie? No, I didn't get to, but I saw the recordings. And I, then say, I, I think it's still it. running. I think you can still get it on great performance. I think it's through PBS or Broadway HD. So check them out. Yeah. They both are not sponsors and these are not official plugs for them, but there's a lot of great resources to check it out because she was quite spectacular in that. It was mm -hmm. a really good, I've heard you sing though, and you're going to be quite spectacular yourself. Will you? This is an incredible song and I love your choices. Will you sing it for everybody? Yes. Let's do it. This is Sydney, everybody. I, 
that's the way it's done. I mean, I mean, FJB, are you out there watching? I mean, it's just like it's just the way it's done. It's that that's more a song that I'd have about breaking up too. Let's just be clear. I'm going to break down. Uh, amazing. Uh, you're a senior. Yes. Where are you off to? I will be going to Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa, for a BFA in musical theater. All like, are you excited to move that far? Yes. <laughs> like, see ya. Out. <laughs> the bags that I'm out. <laughs> all right, girl. Uh, we will look forward to meeting in person, and I'm sending you all the best for your trip to Des Moines and what we look to see in your future for an amazing Thank career. I know. Thanks Thank for singing you. tonight. Good job, Sydney. Everybody. Uh, so up next from the same composer. What the? Was that, did I say the wrong name? Oh Lord! They were there was something in the studio here, and I thought I'd said the wrong name. Oh Lord! They spooked me. Spook! Don't spook the horse. Uh, let's talk to Karina. Karina, come talk to me. Hi. Hi, Karina. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, good. Another junior. There's a few of you that I can see. I can see perform on stage next year. That's so exciting to me. Um, again, another William Finn. You're singing yes. from a new brain, yes. which I loved. I I think I was in college, like maybe oh five oh four. That seems about right. No, I think it was, I don't know. I'm confused with the dates. Do you know the dates? Oh, 98. I'm looking at the, the cheat sheet. It was 90. It was much earlier than I thought. I wasn't even out of high school yet. Um, <laughs> but it's great. It was in that album is Mary Testa, Kristen Chenoweth. It was uh, Chip Zine, just a great group of people on that album. And it was actually written uh, because Bill Finn was going through an abnormal a medical issue. And he sort of wrote it uh, cathartic because he thought he was going to die very quickly. And he wrote a new brain to sort of heal and come through it. And it's about art and life. And it's this quirky little, how did you come across this musical? So uh, I came across this musical when um, I was doing musical theater class with South Coast Repertory uh, oh, yeah. Conservatory. Shout and, out to South Coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a group number. Erin um, Mackey was the, um, she's the teacher there. And yes. Okay. She made the group sing uh, "Heart and Music," mm -hmm. and uh, after we sang that, I went I went back home and I listened to the entire soundtrack. And my brother he came in and he's like, "That's my favorite musical. You have to sing Change." And then I was like, "Okay." And then I brushed by it and I was like, eh, "Maybe." And then I brought it across to my acting my acting coach, and he I said, "Should I sing this?" And he was like, "Yeah, absolutely." So. Here I am. And so now you're going to sing it for us tonight. Yes, I am. Excited. Buckle up. Have we got a treat for you? This is Change from a New Brain. Go ahead, Karina. Do it.
appreciate is that you come into a space, you ground yourself. Uh, there's so many, you see so many young ladies through the years that come in, they're sort of like just, they're teetering and we want to see a woman walk into a room, plant and just take command of that room, right? And that's exactly what you just did. It was really great. Uh, that voice is ridiculous. And we have another year to see you. So uh, who's who's running your tech tonight? Who's, oh, actually, I know because we hit your, your dad, go ahead, your dad gave up his computer to. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's just me because um, my parents are running a Good Friday service, so they'll be able to see. They'll be able to see it later. <laughs> well, please thank them for. I hope you know you just. I think they probably heard a little bit of you at the Good Friday service, but yeah, they give said, them our best. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, thank you so much. We'll thank talk you. to you very soon. Okay. Amazing. That's Korean, everybody. Um, hey, I want to just uh, do a shout out quickly. Uh, we've got 15. It's like 15 people that are on the Project with Jason team. And I keep getting asked who's on the team of Project with Jason. So stay tuned. We've got some stuff planned. Next week, you're going to start to get to uh, find out who they are, where they come from, what they do on our social media. So make sure you're following that. Uh, Projectswithjason.com is the website. Uh, at, uh, at Projects with Jason on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. So you can find out who these amazing friends of mine that come along for this crazy ride, what they're doing in addition to their day jobs uh, and their their own passions and just supporting this project. Uh, Jason Yarko is our brilliant musical supervisor who's uh, writing, not writing, but playing all of these tracks each week for us so we can try and have some sort of balance. Uh, we've got three houses between the home studio here. We have a studio in Anaheim Hills and then all the way up to Studio O for Oregon that are running the show and helping coordinate it. And they're all talking together via all different devices. And we're trying to figure it out and we're at the mercy of the internet. So as we say every week, if there are certain issues on songs, we'll let them record them and we'll put them back in the show another week because we are at the mercy of Wi-Fi, but we're putting it out there. And people are taking this chance to uh, sing a song and put it on the line. And I'm so proud of the bravery and the honesty that's coming out of Virtual Cabaret to just come out and, uh, and also the support from you guys. Uh, on the comments and stuff and just throw in love and support because that's what we need right now. And you know what else we need? We need Yas Quinn to come back one more time and sing one more song and take us home. And when he pitched this song to me, I was like, Yas Quinn, you have to do it. So Quinn, where are you? I'm there right here. <laughs> <That's> amazing, <laughs> by the way. Right? What a lineup tonight. I can't believe I have to go after these kids. Uh, yeah, and like everyone is like just belting and belting and belting. Yeah. Um, what what kind of, I'm going to really put you on the spot, but what kind of touching moment can you give us in the final 30 seconds of this Hallmark movie to inspire us uh, to get up again tomorrow? Well, I'm glad you asked. But, you know, I've been thinking a lot about um, of all this. And I, I feel like the hardest part about this challenge that we're going through is, is that we're all seemingly on our own. And we're such a communal community as a theater community. And theater is like this live event where a thousand people get to experience one thing together and we don't get to do that right now. Yeah. And so I wanted to sing this song just to kind of remind ourselves that we will come back and that even though we're separated, we're not alone. And I hope you guys all sing this together with me. And I wanna shout this out to a very good friend of mine um, who is in the hospital right now, Nick Cordero, who's a big Broadway beloved man and he's uh, fighting COVID right now. And I'd oh, love God. to sing this song for him. All right, give it to us. So sing along. You know, you know it. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road seems rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. You just remember what your old pal said. Oh, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You got troubles. I got them too. There ain't a single thing I wouldn't do for you. We stick together, we can keep it through. Oh, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend. 
friend in me. Some of the folks might be a little smarter than I am, bigger, smarter too. But none of them would ever love you the way I do. It's me and you. And as the years go by, our friendship will never die. They're going to see it's our destiny. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Oh, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Look at that, that was so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. You guys were amazing tonight. Thank you. Follow him on his social media. Stay safe, please. Give our love to New York. We're sending so much love to you from out here on the West Coast. You guys got this. You're going to fight it. We love you very much. Thank you, Quinn. Uh, hey, another shout out. I don't think I finished up the last thought that I had before that song, which was thank you to all those people that are on project with Jason. Uh, I don't think I finished that. And also we have, a, we've said it before, um, we've got students working on this too. We've got Caroline, we've got Belize. And tonight I think we have Georgia, Georgia Rao. You'll see her in the credits who did this amazing uh, video package that you're about to see coming up in a minute because uh, we've got a surprise for you as we close the show. We're gonna get to look at uh, Matilda from uh, Fullerton uh, High School. So as we close, we're gonna take a look at that. Uh, we will see you again next week, next Friday. We've got a very, I'm gonna go ahead and announce it because they're booked, but uh, Orange County's own Ali Mozzie and Nicole Parker who became best friends on the national tour of Wicked. I was there with them. They will be here on our show with alumni, uh, with students from the high schools they went to. Uh, next weekend is Sam Harris will be with us. Uh, I'm freaking out about that one. And tomorrow is the big announcement of the Kevin Klein uh, launch of our artists in conversation, Kevin Klein, with students from California performing Shakespearean monologues. We go at five o'clock Pacific time tomorrow, eight o'clock on the East Coast tomorrow, right here on the YouTube channel for Project with Jason. As I say all the time, be kind to each other. Kindness really matters. Take a second, reach out to somebody you've been talked to in a while. And um, that's it. We'll see you here soon. So let's take a look at Matilda from Fullerton as we leave you. Be good, everybody. Good night. Once upon a time. Come fix my ass! Stop scaring your mother with that book, boy! <laughs> Hey, it's Jason. If you like what you saw tonight, take a second and hit that subscribe button so you can always be updated of what we've got going on here at Projects with Jason. Thanks for watching.